All right, so this little mini lecture is going to be about work and conservation of energy when we have friction involved. So here's a situation, um, we have a block with an applied force acting on it, and then we have a force of friction acting in the opposite direction of the motion. So what's happening here is we have two forces that are causing work on the object, um, and therefore it, they are going to change the object's energy. Now, of course, this block is not changing in height or anything, and there's no springs involved, so it's only changing the object's kinetic energy here. So I have the net work done on the block is equal to the change in kinetic energy. Now that network is um, made up of the work done by the friction force plus the work done by the, um, the applied force. So we get work done by the applied force plus the work done by the friction force is equal to the change in kinetic energy. And then of course we know that work is equal to force times displacement times the cosine of theta. Now remember theta in that equation is between the force vector and the displacement vector. So if we look at the angle between the applied force vector and the displacement vector, that's an angle of zero and the cosine of zero is positive one. So we just get force times displacement for that. Now the angle between the force of friction and the displacement vector, we can see that that's 180 degrees. So we get a cosine of 180 is equal to negative one. So that's going to be a negative force of friction times the displacement. So we end up getting the work done by the applied force, which is a positive force applied times displacement. And then we're subtracting the work done by the friction force because that is negative work done being done by the friction force. And that makes sense, right? That friction force is taking away some of that energy. So we get minus the force of friction times displacement, and that equals change in kinetic energy. Now here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve for the work done by the applied force. So we get force times displacement is equal to the change in kinetic energy plus the force of friction times displacement. Now, a more general situation here, because we're not always just changing kinetic energy, we might also be changing potential energy, or maybe we're just changing potential energy. It really depends on the situation. Um, but we, a more general situation would be force times displacement is equal to the change in mechanical energy plus the force of friction times the displacement. Now, when we have a situation like this where friction is involved, um, the block and the portion of the floor where it's sliding becomes warmer as the block slides because, again, that temperature is relating to the object's thermal energy because we know when we have a force of friction, we have a change in temperature, and that temperature relates to the object's thermal energy, which is the energy associated with the random motion of atoms and molecules. Now, that thermal energy, change in thermal energy, is actually equal to the work done by the friction force. So the force of friction multiplied by the displacement. So I can rewrite this equation that I have at the top here. And what we get is the work done by the applied force is equal to the change in mechanical energy plus the change in thermal energy. And this is looking very, um, it's, it's looking like an equation that we've seen before, right? Just that the work done on that object is equal to the total change in energy here. So what's happening is we are now looking at the entire system. We're looking at not only the block and the forces on the block um, and the change in energy of the block, but we are looking at the block and the floor together. And so we have a applied force on that block and floor system. That applied force is causing a change in energy of both the block and the floor system. So when we have a conservation of energy, remember it says that the total energy of the system cannot be created or destroyed, right? Now, when we talk about total energy of the system, what we're talking about is that the mechan we're talking about the mechanical energy, the thermal energy, and any other type of internal energy. So it's not just the mechanical energy when we have non-conservative forces such as friction and when we have internal changes of energy, which I'll talk about a little bit later. So that total energy of the system can change only by amounts of energy that are transferred to and from that system by an outside force, like an applied force. So we get the work done on the system will be equal to the change in energy. And then here, that change in energy now is not just the change in mechanical energy. We're talking about the entire energy of the system. So the change in mechanical energy plus the change in thermal energy plus the change in internal energy as well. Now, if we have an isolated system, what this means is that there's no energy transfer to or from the system by external forces. So we don't have an applied force now. 
Okay, and remember the total energy of an isolated system cannot change due to the conservation of energy. So what happens here is that energy transfers can occur within the system. So again, here we are kind of expanding our system and instead of just looking at the block, we're now looking at the block plus the floor together. Before we would say, oh, energy is lost due to friction, but here when we're talking about conservation of energy, that energy is not lost, it's just transferred into a different type of energy, thermal energy. So another example would be an example of a rock climber. If that rock climber climbs up that wall and they start with a lot of potential energy at the top of that rock wall or the top of a cliff, and then they descend slowly with the help of friction. Now, all of that potential energy is not being lost. What's happening is that potential energy is getting transferred into thermal energy. So our friction transforms gravitational potential energy of the system to thermal energy of the rings and rope. Then the total energy, like we said before, does not change as the rock climber descends. So when we have an isolated system, we can use this equation right here. The mechanical, sorry, change in mechanical energy plus the change in thermal energy plus the change in internal energy or the total change of energy of the system does not change. So that is going to be equal to zero. Now in an isolated system, this is basically the take home of this little mini lecture. Um, you wanna remember that in an isolated system, we can relate the total energy at one instant to the total energy at another instant without considering the energies at intermediate times. And this can make our calculations much, much simpler. So what we get here is this equation right here is just the last equation on the last slide, just rearranged a little bit. So we can use an equation like this, which says that the total energy final, and this is the total mechanical energy. So we have both kinetic and potential, or maybe just one of them in the final case or initial case. So we have mechanical energy final is equal to mechanical energy initial minus the change in thermal energy. So whatever energy is lost, due to friction, and then minus the change in internal energy. So we can use this equation in our calculations when we have non-conservative forces in our system, such as friction involved. Um, now, a lot of the time, we don't really talk about internal energy so much. So you'll be using a lot of the time this equation, but in this form. So again, this is our final total energy, and that's equal to our final sorry, our initial total energy, and then minus that change in thermal energy, which is just the force of friction times the displacement. And we saw that a couple slides ago. So a lot of the time you will use this equation right here in your calculations when friction is involved. Now, of course, we know, and we learned this before with conservation of energy, if there are no non-conservative forces present in the system, then our change in thermal energy and change in internal energy are both zero, and we know that the final mechanical energy is equal to the initial kinetic energy. And we have that traditional conservation of energy that we've talked about before. Let's talk a little bit about internal energy transfers and what these are. So, we can have an external force that can change the kinetic or potential energy of an object without actually doing work on the object and therefore without transferring energy to the object. So in this case, that force is responsible for transfers of energy from one type to another, but it's happening inside the object. So a couple examples here. We have an example of an ice skater pushing off the wall. Now, of course, we know that the kinetic energy of the ice skater is going to increase because of the external force on her from the wall. Due to Newton's third law, she pushes on the wall, the wall pushes back on her, and she's able to push off of the wall. So there is a force on her from the wall, and that causes an increase in kinetic energy, but there's no displacement, right? Because there's no displacement, the wall doesn't actually do work on her. So it's not actually transferring energy to her. What's happening is that the kinetic energy increases due to internal transfers from the biochemical energy in her muscles. Now, another example of this would be a car accelerating forward. Um, again, frictional forces. So it is an outside force. We have frictional forces of the road, but they don't do work on the car because, again, the road is not moving a displacement to cause 
work being done on the car. So because there's no displacement, there's no actual work being done. What happens is the car's kinetic energy increases as a result of the internal transfers from the energy stored in the fuel. Now, most of the time when you're doing these calculations, um, we're not really paying attention to the internal energy transfers, but this is what happens in real life when we're talking about, you know, work being done on something or, you know, a conservation of energy. Um, there is internal energy transfers that factor in as well. But like I said, most of the time, you're not actually going to pay attention to them when we do calculations in our physics class.